Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of About Abroad, where it's my job to introduce you to people who have built amazing lives for themselves in various foreign corners of the globe. We're talking with expats and thought leaders about moving abroad, remote work, visas, and all the fun and practical knowledge that you need to know to follow in their footsteps. If you've ever dreamed of making a life for yourself overseas, maybe working remotely or embracing long-term travel, retiring or studying abroad, or even just taking a peek inside life beyond your borders, you've landed in the right place. My guest today is Christian Balsells. He is the CEO and founder of Balsells Group, which they specialize in legal, immigration, business, and taxes based out of Barcelona, particularly for people wanting to immigrate to Spain. I live in Spain. Those of you listening probably know that already. And I'm a huge advocate for outsourcing things that are complicated and challenging when you're living abroad to the pros and the ball sales group is at the peak of that mountain when it comes to being a pro in all things immigration and being an expat in Spain. So I got in touch with them and asked them to come on the show to share some of their knowledge about what it takes to move to Spain and do it correctly, all your different options and why Spain is such a popular place to move to right now. So if you have any interest in living in Spain and you want to get into some of the details about how to actually make it happen, this episode is for you. Christian is a wealth of knowledge and was really kind to share some of it with us here today. So please help me in welcoming Christian Balcells to About Abroad. Christian, buenos dias. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you? All good. Thank you. Buenos dias. (laughs) <laughs> we'll uh maybe we'll do a little bit of spanglish throughout this uh throughout this conversation thank you so much for being here and uh taking some time out of your day i'm sure you're very busy uh spain is a popular place to move to and you are an expert on all things uh immigration tax and uh, a variety of other things that people moving to spain should know about so i think what you have to share will be very relevant for the about abroad audience so thank you Thank you to you for for inviting me to have this time to explain to the to the people uh, how to move to Spain and other uh, related questions and it's always nice to meet new persons and nice to meet you as well. Encantado. <laughs> encantado, encantado. Muchas gracias. Well, let's let's start real quick with just a brief introduction for the audience. I think, you know, I'm very familiar with your work. The reason I I wanted to have you guys on the show is because I follow along your social media, your blog. Um when I was applying for my visa to come to Spain, I reviewed your website to find answers to questions that I had and I always find that this information is often very outdated. Government websites are very outdated and and it's great to find a professional organization that stays on top of this. So I'm a big fan of the the content that you produce and the work that you guys do. and we're in different cities i'm in valencia you're in barcelona but i really appreciate what you guys do and and the uh and the the quality of the content you put out there so i know that people listening to this anybody considering moving to spain is going to definitely want to check out your website we will we will link to that in the in the show notes so people can go and find it but just as sort of an introduction like could you tell us a little bit about yourself and and the company balsells group and what you what you do in sort of a a summarized format. Yes, uh well, uh, my name is Christian Balsells. I'm the the CEO and the founder of uh, Balsells Group. I uh, studied law in, in Barcelona in one faculty is called Tesade and then I was doing uh, some courses in in the UK and uh, in Geneva in Switzerland and uh, when I finished my my studies, well, I decided to well, I had some practices in other firms. but i saw myself as an entrepreneur very very soon so uh, i decided to to found balsays group and uh, taking in consideration that also my father is a lawyer and he has his own uh, office and uh, well i had this spirit of uh, to set up my my own business and uh, we set up the how i set up the balsays group in in 2013 in july and with the idea with three ideas Uh, the, the, to be the best ones in what we do, and uh, in immigration, I, I think we are the best ones in Spain. 
And the second idea is uh, to try to cover uh, as much as possible uh, the territory. So we, we created a very easy website where you can find uh, information that it can be applicable in all Spain. So uh, the idea was that we are located in Barcelona, but we want to offer our services all, uh, all around Spain. Yeah, idea of the company is to try to be as digital, as modern as possible. That's why since 2013, we always had a very optimized website uh, with a lot of information, uh, with a lot of videos, a lot of explanations on how to do the procedures. So the, the three things was to be, to what we do, to be the best. And every day we wake up with the idea to give the best service to our people. And uh, the second idea is that the location is not a problem, that we can help. Actually, we have a lot of people in Valencia, in Andalusia, in Canary Islands, in Alicante. And, uh, and the third idea is to be as digital as possible, to be as informative as possible, to try to, to be on the new times. No? Now with COVID, it's an obligation, but since 2013, we've we always been in this digital uh, movement. Yeah, it's super important, it, and it sh I think it shows through in the uh, in the marketing and on the website. Like I said, like when I when I came across your the content you guys were producing, I said, "Oh, everything's up to date." Like that that was the biggest thing for me is that the content was up to date. Like sometimes I would find articles about particular visas I was looking at; they would be five years outdated, <laughs> and and maybe the office that you're supposed to go to to file something or send something to doesn't even exist anymore. And, uh, but I got, when I got to about sales group and I found the content you put out there, I, okay, good. This, this stuff's up to date. You can tell it's a, it's a forward thinking firm. So that's very cool to hear that that was a kind of a part of the mission from the, from the very beginning. And you, you mentioned the, the people that you help, they're all around Spain. Um, so how, what, what does your typical customer look like? I'm sure it crosses a lot of different uh, backgrounds and, and differences, but in general, it's correct to say you're, you're helping people immigrate to Spain via various possibilities, various different visas and, and backgrounds. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Uh, another, uh, uh, remember the first thing that I said is to be the best one in immigration, uh, and I say in immigration, because there is law firms that they are only specialized on certain type of permits. Our office, but says, uh, we deal with all immigration. We have the the code, immigration code, and if somebody needs to have a work permit or, or has a couple from Europe or is a student, so we help everybody. The, the rich, the medium, the good, the ones, everybody. So this is an idea of we an immigration expert because in immigration law, uh, you can learn from everything. So what is applicable to one thing, it can be applicable to another permit. So uh, this would be an, the idea. So we, do, we deal with immigration 100%. And, uh, well, obviously, uh, being located in Barcelona, most of our clients, are the, um, they are from Catalonia region, from Barcelona region. Since COVID, and a little bit, like two years before COVID, we started to see that the customers, uh, they don't care where you are located, especially uh, people like you from the, from the U.S., that they are used to deal with people from, uh, I don't know, from Arkansas, and they are living in, in Washington, D.C. So we saw this target that, uh, the digital revolution, it was before uh, COVID, actually. And we started to advise people that they are coming to Valencia, to Canary Islands, to Andalusia. Of course, there is some regions of Spain that they are more uh, expat-oriented, no? like more, there is more attraction. Uh, and what we try to do is, well, to provide this service to everybody online, we try always to aut automate automatize, like to automatize, like to the process. Mm -hmm. To automate. And, exactly. And, uh, but there is people always that they are the old style. They want to see me. They want to touch me. They want to give me a hack if they receive the permit. So we deal with both, you know, like digital and physical. <laughs> Uh, they've already got some of the Spanish spirit in them. They wanna, they wanna put their hands on you and give you two besos and exactly. uh, and and uh, <laughs> feel the feel the full effect of being in Spain. Uh, that's interesting. You guys were out in front of the digital revolution. That I mean, you know, digital revolution. I guess has been happening for some time. But you're right. COVID really accelerated this. You've got more people working remotely. More people with location independence and the ability to to live where they want. You've also got Brexit, which, you know, from, from a lot of my audience is from Europe, from the UK. 
Um, that creates some some opportunities and some challenges, I'm sure, for, for you. So it's a very interesting time to be in your line of work, I imagine. Yeah, actually, yeah, with Brexit, we... With COVID, uh, I mean, to, to be honest, was, of course, we reduced the amount of clients that they were coming to Spain because with the restrictions in COVID. But we found that with Brexit, we had a lot of work, much more than normal, uh, because with Brexit, there was a, I mean, there was a deadline. So everybody wanted to apply before 31st of December. And uh, yeah, it was a... It, it has been an, uh, an amazing uh, experience, this thing of Brexit, because a lot of people, they wanted to become Spanish residents before Brexit. And uh, yes, in immigration, there is always something new. For example, for some years, uh, we had a law for all the Jewish that they were expelled from Spain in, in 15th century. The, it was a, a law that the king approved. So all the families that they could prove that their family were living in in uh, 1492 in Spain, they could recover the nationality. So, I mean, there is always new things, you know, with Brexit and other wow. new things. Uh, regular immigration, also since 2013, we have the investor program that if you buy a property for half a million, you can get a, a fast track residence permit in Spain. So yeah, it's a very, it's a very interesting area. Besides the lawyers, they don't like this area at all like uh, some type of lawyers it's becoming a very uh, interesting area me personally i like because i i used to travel a lot to study in different places to meet with people uh, to talk to discuss to listen to learn and for me it's the it's my life actually this job. <laughs> i love when you can kind of blur the line like uh the line becomes kind of fuzzy between work and life and like when you i can see it the people are listening i i think they can probably hear it in your voice but i can see it on your face you you really love this stuff which for a lot of people it's like i mean for me for instance it's very it's the hard part of being an expat living abroad like is is the the details of this paperwork and the and the laws changing and all the regulation and doing it in another language and and it's it's all very it's it's a fun kind of challenge because it's kind of like you once you get over that hump it's kind of like you earned it but for a lot of people it's it's i mean this is why they hire you because they don't want to become experts in this and and you you live it you like you said see see exactly it's, uh, it can be very tough to do immigration alone without a lawyer and uh, and uh, that's why we we do this connection uh, with the bureaucracy of spain and uh, yeah, and uh, we make it happen, you know, we make the permits happen. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's our, so, uh, our sorry, uh, in our mask that we wear with COVID, we put the logo of Balsays in one side, we make it happen in the other side. <laughs> You need that kind of encouragement sometimes going through the the visa process. Like we're gonna make this happen. Don't don't worry. I'm a I'm a big fan. I've I've mentioned this several times on my show before. Um, but I'm a big fan of outsourcing your your weaknesses or what you're not really good at, you know, or what you're what you're not really like knowledgeable in. So one of the things I've learned, I've I've moved to a handful of different countries and gone through different visa processes in different places, and. I almost always would recommend someone hire a professional to do this sort of thing, to help with taxes, to help with setting up businesses, whatever. You, if you're trying to do it in your home country, it can be challenging enough, but doing it in another country is is very, very difficult. And so I'm a big fan of outsourcing this kind of thing to a, to a professional group like you guys. I'm curious, what is sort of your, when, when someone comes to you and is sort of inquiring about, hey, we we have our situation, we want to move to Spain, we want to immigrate to Spain, we're considering hiring a lawyer or not. What do you tell them? How do you, how do you advise them on, on why they should perhaps? Not, not to ask you to do your elevator pitch, your sales pitch, but, but why should someone hire a professional? Well, uh, normally because they want to, to get the permit with guarantees, not to, to lose time behind. And because normally the people that they want to, well, there is several profiles of people who wants to immigrate to Spain, but normally people, they say, I want to be in Spain in September. So uh, if they had a lawyer, pues then they are, they're going to be sure that they will accomplish this deadline. Because I saw a lot of people that they try to do by themselves. Some of them, they succeed also without a lawyer. I mean, it's not the most difficult thing of the world, immigration to Spain, but a lot of them, 
uh, they miss one document, another document, and we, when you do a wrong application, then you can be on the on the wheel, like on the circle for uh, several months. The Spanish institutions, they, they are not flexible, they are not helpful, and uh, they are very strict. I mean, they like to reject applications. Uh, <laughs> So if you don't have the file perfect, and especially in the U.S., in the consulates that there are in, of Spain in the U.S., they are mo- very strict, actually. So you need to be sure that you have everything. So to hire us will make the, the process more easy. And uh, always we give 24-7. Like we are always in, well, 24-7, 24-5, let's say like this. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I can answer emails on the weekend as well. But we are very close to the client and sometimes... Also, we make them psychologically positive, you know, mm-hmm. because some of them, they stress a lot and say, oh, my God, yeah. this bullshit. I say, don't worry. Be <laughs> we, we will be the ones that will get it done for you. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's, it's super important because it can be uh, a heavy process that like can really start to suck some of the joy out of moving to another country. It's, it's, it's fun. It's exciting to be thinking about living in Spain, but then you get into this process sometimes and it, you can get halfway through six months in and say, Ooh, I'm, I'm exhausted already. I don't know if I want to, if I want to go through with it. So I've seen that happen to a lot of people. How, you, how it was your experience? Which permit you have? I have the non-lucrative visa. And you applied at the, which consulate? Washington DC was the, the consulate that I needed to go to. And it was a, I was really, I talked to some people who have done this through the LA consulate and, and Chicago, I think, and others. And I got really lucky, I think, with Washington DC. Washington is good. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's normal to good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> normal to good, which in visa terms, I feel like is, is about as good as you can hope for. I mean, they, they responded to emails. I, I had like a hundred emails, uh, um, back and forth with them asking questions and they, they would respond relatively quickly. And we, when we had our appointment, I was so worried when we had our interview appointment to, to finalize the visa that I was sure I was going to get there and they were going to say, oh, you're missing one document or something. But uh, they, the list that they had as prepare of things was, was correct. And um, actually, it's funny, that's that appointment uh, that like for people listening that don't know, but to get the non lucrative visa, you have to show up in person to a consulate in your home country and do the application process and submit it right there in front of them and do sort of a, an interview. And we didn't know we hadn't picked where we were going to live at that point, we were trying to decide between Barcelona and Valencia. And they asked us in that moment, right as they were signing the paperwork, okay, where are you going to live? And we, we didn't know. <laughs> and so we just said, uh, we have to decide now. And they said, yes, you have to decide right now. And so we, uh, okay, I guess we're going to go to Valencia, just sort of a flip of the coin. And, um, and that's how we ended up here. Uh, and, uh, and so anyway. <laughs> if you were in Barcelona, we would do the interview in person. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just going to have to come up there when uh, when I go for the the next round of renewals and um, and meet you face to face to do that. Very good, very good, very good. <laughs> so I'm curious, here, did you? You've been here oh, for sorry. one year. One year, in La, you're in La Rambla too, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's the the heart of the city. Uh, I'm I'm excited to to come back up there now that things are opening up a bit more. We don't have the borders closed between Barcelona or between Catalonia and Valencia. I'm excited to to come up there and spend some time. Muy bien. Yes, pues you will be very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be right back to the show after a quick break for a note from our sponsor. This season is brought to you by my good friends over at Insured Nomads. They're the absolute best in the business when it comes to providing health, travel, and medical insurance for nomads, expats, and really just all forms of world travelers. I know insurance is often something that's overlooked when we're fantasizing about traveling the world, but it's absolutely necessity that we address this because often the policy you have in your home country isn't going to cover you while you're abroad. And it's also a requirement, as a lot of people may not realize, to actually buy private travel or expat insurance, as it's called sometimes, to obtain a visa or even enter certain countries. So fortunately, there are companies like Insured Nomads to help us with this. Not only do they have excellent coverage and great prices, but they're also providing a first-class experience with additional perks and best-in-class technology via their app. It's, a, it's an amazing experience. I can't recommend it enough. Now, this is a company that was built by world travelers for world travelers. So 
They know what it's like to find yourself in a difficult medical situation abroad, and they want to keep you from having that same bad experience. So the next time you're planning a trip abroad, whether it's for a week or a lifetime, check out Insured Nomads via the link in the show notes. Okay, now back to the episode. I'm curious, did, you mentioned you lived in a few other countries. Um, did you ever have to go through the, the visa process or immigration process in another, in another place? Or was it shorter periods of time you never had to do that? Well, as a, as a European citizen, the countries where I was, they were in, the, in, in Europe, the UK yeah. and the Switzerland. And, uh, and the university was preparing all this. So I didn't have this experience. And I was living also in, in the U.S., in Tacoma, uh, for one year when I was 17, in the, next to Seattle. Ah, okay. And I, and I was with the school. I was in an institute there in Bellarmine. And uh, that's why I'm a little bit a U.S. Uh, character as well. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm joking. Yeah. But, uh, but I didn't do the immigration there. I think the school did it for me. But, uh, but, but yeah, I want to be honest with you. I mean, uh, but, yeah. uh, but yes, I, I was living in other countries. Yeah, I, th- I, I have to imagine, though, like that experience, even if you weren't having to do the paperwork and things like that. I mean, just having lived in some other countries and experienced what it's like, even within Europe. I mean, moving to another country, even though it's legally feasible and, and fairly relatively easy to do, you're still an outsider living sí, on the sí. inside now. And it presents challenges in, in some ways or another. And I'm sure you can empathize with your customers because of that experience. Sí, sí, for sure. I mean, uh, uh, for sure, these experiences. And, uh, and I've always been interested in meeting new people. And it's very interesting also. In cities like yeah. Barcelona, uh, the multicultural atmosphere is nice. I, I like it. Yeah, it's a it's a very multicultural city. And I think one of the more desirable places to live, uh, Spain is becoming, you know, one of those countries where lots of people want to move to. Barcelona is probably at the top of that list. And uh, I'm curious, what, what do you think it is about Spain? I mean, you're you're from Barcelona, you're from Spain. Like, what do you think it is that calls the all these people uh, to, to this beautiful country? Well, uh, well, here we have, a, in general, good weather. Uh, good food. The people is open to integrate people. So, and the, the style of life is not very stressful, like in general. Yeah. And uh, but uh, but now with COVID, we see that there is other cities like Valencia, Malaga, Tenerife that they have also a big amount of expats there. Like uh, yeah. so, it's not because. Barcelona was booming for a certain time, but also other cities. Valencia, for example, you, there is a, an amount of U.S. citizens and Europeans that they are living there permanently as well. Yeah, I recently saw, um, do you know the, the organization Internations? Have you, are you familiar with them? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, they did a survey of all their subscribers and they listed Valencia as the number one place in the world for expats. Like that's, yes. that was the way the voting worked out. So yeah, I think Valencia is one of those cities on the rise. You mentioned Malaga, Tenerife, Gran Canaria is also making a big push for, for expats. Are there any other places in Spain? Um, any sort of up and comers that you're, that, that you're uh, noticing? Well, uh, there is a lot of people in Madrid as well. And yeah. uh, Marbella, Cadiz. And uh, this would be the main regions. But I always like a lot uh, as well the people that they emigrate to cities which I would never expect they would go. Like in the north, for example, in Oviedo, Cantabria, uh, Basque Country. And because it's me, I love it, these areas as well. Like, uh, yeah. And they're not, me very, too. <laughs> they're not very popular, but. Totally agree. Yeah, I love going up. My, some of my favorite regions in Spain are like up in the Pyrenees and in the north. You mentioned Cantabria and Galicia and these areas. And you, when you meet people that move there and you're like, oh, you, you discovered a hidden gem, I think, a little bit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But everything is nice in Spain. Like that. Yeah, that's, that's for me that you mentioned the, uh, the laid back, the, you know, the, the life is not very stressful. And, you know, coming, coming from the U.S. where we... 
we tend to work a lot and long hours and um and and i mean i have expat friends here from other countries that we all say the same thing from they're from the uk they're from the netherlands you know, australia all over where you just say when you come to spain you you relax a little bit you learn to go at a at a little bit of a slower pace it's really it the, you you kind of fall into the spanish lifestyle very easily find that really relaxing that and like we were just talking about geographically, uh, like I live here in Valencia, you're in Barcelona, we're on the Mediterranean, but in a few hours, three or four hours, you can be in the Pyrenees. And in eight hours, you can be in the north in Basque country. And there's all there's so much diversity for, for me coming from the US, like it's <laughs> I'm driving for days before I reach uh those the differences between the sea and the high mountains for instance so it's just super super interesting you have so much in a very a pretty relatively smaller area yeah i agree with you and uh, you in barcelona you can take the car and in two hours you are in a ski resort in the Pyrenees, yeah. for example and you can be skiing and uh, actually in may we went with my family to ski but there was people that they were going to the beach in costa brava <laughs> Can you imagine? That's amazing. <laughs> see, see, and we were, I mean, there was a, not a lot of snow, but there was, I mean, we were skiing, so there was a snow. And, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's mind blowing for somebody to imagine. And like, and not like little hills either. These are like big Pyrenees mountains. Like it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty me. incredible. And then on top of that, you have, how far are you from the French border? Two hours or something? Yeah, two hours. Two hours into France, so yeah, it's quite a location, Barcelona, and uh, I think, I think it's it's high on on a lot of people's lists. I wanted to ask you specifically about some of the we we won't give away too much free information here because uh, you know there's there's a lot to cover, but I am curious about some of the the v, in particular the visa options that people have for coming to Spain. I know there's a lot, but maybe we could just talk about two or three of the of the top ones. We've mentioned the non-lucrative visa. We, you mentioned the, I think what people refer to as the golden visa, the 500,000 investment, mm -hmm. but what are, what are some of like, and maybe, maybe we include those two, but what are some of the two or three kind of top options that people have when evaluating moving to Spain from the outside? Yes. Well, basically if you want to come to Spain, there is five, uh, five type of permits. Uh, so we need to see which of these five uh, you want to go through and then we find a specific permit. But you can come to Spain to study, uno. Uh, you can come to Spain uh, to work for a Spanish company, number two. You can come to Spain uh, to do to open a business, like a restaurant, uh, an applications, I don't know, like uh, an IT project. So number three would be a business permit. Number four would be the non-lucrative or the non-working permit. And, uh, and number five would be the investor permit, if you invest half a million. Uh, so what normally we do to our clients say, well, you want to come to study, to work, to open your business, to not, do, to not work, or to invest in real estate. And then from this, we find the proper route. Great, great places to start. Five pretty easy questions. So, and, and then so for the student visa, is it correct like I know, I know some people that are adults, but they, you know, they came here and they're basically taking English classes. They're studying English, or I'm sorry, studying Spanish here. They're English speakers studying Spanish. This, this works uh, as a, as an option for the student visa. Yes. The, you can come to study Spanish, but uh, this would be one way to come. Uh, but the Spanish course needs to have two requirements. The first one is that it needs to be 20 hours per week. And the second thing is that the academy that where you are going to study Spanish, it needs to be registered in Instituto Cervantes. It's like it needs to be an official uh, academy. It cannot be a, not pr a private without any type of uh, seal or uh, accreditation. I see. I see. Okay. Okay, perfect. Another another one that so we we actually have a pretty big following from Latin America, and I know some people that have come here from Latin America uh, because like they were I guess I understand it right there that they come from countries that were former Spanish colonies, and so therefore they can move here a little bit easier or something. Does this does this make sense to you, or or can you elaborate on that? Well, uh, the people from Latin America. Uh, they need to go through the same route as the U.S. citizens, the Russians, and the 
the people from Jordan. The only thing is that the Latin Americans, uh, that they come to live to Spain uh, after two years, because they are originally from a colony or a country that had connections with Spain, after two years they can ask the citizenship. But on terms of immigration, the permits, they are the same. Okay. Okay. So they still need to ask themselves one of those, they need to fit into one of those five categories that you were mentioning exactly. before. The only thing that after two years, they could get the Spanish passport, which a, yeah. a person from the U.S. has to wait for 10 years to get the passport. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. That answers that answers some questions. And then, so, yeah, let's let's go beyond the, uh, you know, the, the visa portion. So if you think about it in stages, like there's one point where you're living outside of Spain. Then there's a point where you're like me, where you're on a visa year to year or every two years, you have to renew it um, up to a certain point. So in my case, I believe I can renew the non-lucrative visa up to five years. And then after five years, you have to transition to sort of the next stage. So the, and then the, the ultimate stage would be getting the passport and citizenship. So what's, what's that in-between phase called like, and, and how do you transition into that phase? Yes. Well, uh, in general, because there is exceptions, but normally the people that they want to come to Spain, initially they get, they get a permit for one year and uh, then they can renew it in Spain for another two years. After these two years, they can renew it again for two years. So we, we are talking about one plus two plus two. These five years, you are on a temporary status, we say in law, temporal, residente temporal. After five years, you can apply for what we call the permanent status. And it's a permit that will be valid for five years. Then you will change from temporal to permanente, to permanent. Okay. And uh, this would be the, the route. Once you become permanent, you don't need to justify why you want to live in Spain. So now you, every, every several years, you need to say, no, I have a work contract, I have a business, I have money, whatever. After these five years of temporal, when you become permanent, you don't need to explain anything to anybody. More or less. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's super useful. So I think what's important there for people to understand is if you're like me, um, when I was looking at, for instance, the non-lucrative visa, I thought, okay, well, after one year or two years or three years or something, for sure, I will have to come back. Spain's not going to just let me stay. But I think if I understand it correctly, there is sort of, there. It, it's not, yeah, I guess the, the right way to put it is it's not so difficult to transfer from this sort of temporary visa status to that sort of next stage where you, you get the five-year visa uh, residency sort of like it, it's it's possible spain's not looking to kick you out at that point they they don't mind if you stay if you go through the process correctly exactly Is that correct yeah yeah it's correct i mean uh, yeah it's, it's correct it's correct yeah so you can the the point being there you can come to spain with short-term aspirations or long-term aspirations and and figure it out as you go you don't have to commit to one to one process up front and also if you come and you find you fall in love and you want to stay then there's a process to go through that will allow that. Um, I think in some other countries that that's a bit more difficult, um, a lot more difficult. In fact, like it would be almost the opposite mentality, which is you could maybe come for a couple years, but after that, it's going to be really difficult to stay. So I think that's really welcoming of Spain in a lot of ways. Yes, yes. And actually always uh, what I advise is to go uh, poco a poco, no? like step by step, like not to, to be so like renew a step by step, like, Renew the permits uh, when it's the moment to renew it, and but there is always a way to to remain in Spain. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That's that's really useful. And uh, and and then one other one last question I'll ask you on this is how do people? What do you recommend to people who come on, let's say, a student visa or non lucrative visa? They come here, they're they're not here to work, but then they want to make the trend. Like they've decided, okay, I've been here for one year, um, but now I I need to work. I need to find a job, a local job. What is that, generally speaking, what is that process like? And, and is it fairly easy to do? Should you expect that you can do that? Or is that generally pretty challenging? Well, we, we need to go to the specifics of the situation of the person. But uh, normally, with a, let's say, with a non-lucrative residence permit, after 12 months, uh, you have to be not working for 12 months in Spain. But after 12 months, if you want, you can modify the permit for the work permit but you need to have a work contract. So 
a lot of people, they think that with the non-lucrative, they will never work in Spain. This is not correct. If you want, after the first 12 months, you can switch to the work permit, but you need to have a work contract. Gotcha. And is it difficult to get the work contract before you have the visa, the correct visa? Like, will, will people give you the contract without the correct visa? Well, now, uh, for example, in Barcelona, the companies, they are familiar with these situations. So uh, if, the, if the guy from the U.S. with the non-lucrative says to the company, I mean, this, this, in this scenario, they will understand. It takes around two months until you can start working because there is a process behind, but it will depend on the company. But uh, normally, I mean, of course, there is old, old style companies that they say, no, no, I don't want a problem. Uh, I prefer to hire somebody already with this solved. But now I see more on the other side, companies that they understand that, that the immigration takes time and they want this profile of persons. So they wait and they help to get the permit. I see. Okay, great. Perfect. Um, I think that paints a nice picture for, for people, you know, that are looking to come to Spain, some of the options that they have. Um, if you've got a half a million euros to spend, that's probably the easiest way for most of us that don't have a half a million euros to spend. Um, you have some other options and, uh, and, and I can attest that the process is, is, uh, is doable. I would also say hire somebody from the beginning. Don't try to do it by yourself. <laughs> it is not super easy. You guys do a lot more than just immigration. I know you, you, you do, you, you specialize also in other areas like corporate and, and tax law and things like that. So, well, before we wrap it up here and 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 uh, finish off the interview, do you want to touch on anything related to that? Any kind of general feelings about uh, the differences between being, you know, being an expat and living in Spain and having to navigate the legal and tax system, um, as opposed to you know just being Spanish? Is there is there anything kind of common challenges you see associated with this? Yes. Well, uh, our, our one of our goals is to be the best. And to be the best in immigration, you need to know other areas of the law because they are very connected, uh, especially taxes. Because now uh, what we saw also is that most of the people that they come here, they, the first thing that they ask you is, how about the taxes? And then they ask you about the permit. Because there is a lot of confusion in internet with, I'm going to be tax resident, I'm going to pay taxes in Spain. They have the wealth tax, they have the 720, like they have... Uh, I will lose all my money. No, I mean, so we have a tax department and uh, specialized on, 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 on international tax law, Fiscalia Internacional. And uh, what we try is uh, normally, uh, well, we explain the situation with the taxes once they come to live into Spain. Uh, there is one thing that it, I will tell you now uh, that it's very important that there is two rules, no? the 183 days, that if you are here in the country for more than six months, you could be tax resident, but then there is an exception, it's the convention between the countries. So we need to see the agreements between uh, Spain and the US, uh, because in this rule of the 183 days, they, it has exceptions also. So what I mean with this is that it's good to have an, an, an expert who explains you how it works. And also some of our clients, because they said, Christian, I want to open a business, I want to do, uh, I don't know, to open a small restaurant or, or to, to do a consultancy company or finance. And so we have a corporate department uh, where we, uh, we help the people to set up their companies and, uh, or to become a freelancer. For example, we have web designers. I mean, and, uh, and then we have legal department where we go to the court uh, we, in case of divorce or in case of if there is a debt or more uh, oriented to legal things, but not penal. For example, here in the office, we never, we did penal cases, not, it's very unusual. But all the rest, we, we do it. Uh, being consideration that all um, from immigration, no? like all the, all the things that they could need. Yeah, it's all very connected and, and very, uh, it can get very fuzzy, very challenging. Uh, as a foreigner in a in a new place, like how do I not? I mean, I'm from the U.S. It's not very fun to have to deal with the IRS. I really don't need to deal with the IRS and the IRS of Spain. <laughs> um, it's it it's doing it twice. It's it becomes very challenging. Like al already, it's confusing in my native language, much less trying to do it all in a 
in another language where there's different rules and different expectations, different, the timing's different. So mm. again, it's like, it's nice to have one place you can go to and get all of these, these, uh, these ch questions and challenges sort of answered for you. So it's great that you guys have connected that. So this was super, super useful. Uh, I learned a lot and, um, I'm sure people listening have as well. So, uh, thank you so much for the, for the time. And um, if you want to mention right now where people can follow you and, and learn more about you, I will also put all of this in the in the show notes so people can click on it easily. But um, yeah, no, the, the website and, and any social media handles that they should follow. Yes, well, we have the website, valsagegroup.com and uh, immigrationspain.es. And uh, both of them, they are uh, in, in Spanish, English, uh, French, Russian. And uh, so you can decide the language, and uh, and uh, there we we have a blog very active, and we have a list of services that we do. We have also how to contact us, and then besides the two websites, the two platforms, uh, we have also an Instagram account in Balsays and Balsays Group and Immigration Spain, where we publish every day every day during the week uh, interesting things like there is an update of the law two thousand one barra 14 or there is uh, they open the border if you have seen but we are in very informative we also say do a photo of uh, our office and say look how nice it's in the office like <laughs> we, in between friendly and informative and we have the youtube channel that we have uh, uh, above thirty thousand subscribers already wow thirty thousand uh, already hmm. but yeah good. it's i can i can say it's it's very uh that and your Instagram page are are packed full of really good information and the blog. I mentioned the blog earlier, but but you guys do webinars and you do presentations on things that are changing and how to how to convert from one visa to the next and apply for things. So there's lots of great free content um, there av available for people listening. Like if you're if you really are interested in moving to Spain, um, Balcells Group's a, gr a great place to start. And uh, and if it gets to a point to where you're really interested. Then you can um, then you can contact them to to help you go through the process and navigate those those muddy waters. So uh, exactly, Christian, muchas gracias, and uh, and I look forward to hopefully meeting in real life in in Barcelona the next time uh, I'm able to get up that way. Thank you so much. Muy bien, gracias. Un saludo. Thank you. Big hug to everybody. Come to Spain. <laughs> Thanks so much, Christian. Gracias. Thanks for tuning in today from wherever you are in the world. Once again, I'm Chase, and this has been another episode of About Abroad. You can visit aboutabroad.com to get our latest updates and listen to past episodes, or find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, uh, really anywhere you get your podcasts. On that note, if you enjoyed the show, feel free to subscribe, and if inclined, leave a few stars and a review. It's truly, truly appreciated and will help more wanderers just like you find us. Until the next time, adios from España.